Hey guys, um, so I know that some of you who follow this channel also follow our main channel. Uh, if you do, this video is going to be a little bit different, so I really wanted to use this video as an opportunity to uh, get some feedback on uh, the website that I've created uh, from people who are experienced in the field uh, and you know know some of the technical details. That being said, um, if you are interested, um, please watch on. It may be a little bit more technical, or it might be quite technical. Uh, and for anybody who uh, is into programming or knows how to program, uh, I would really appreciate some feedback. So uh, I'm going to link my GitHub down below. Uh, let me know what you think. So the East Cotton Burgess uh, website is an online store which sells high quality Chinese teas which we have sourced ourselves from uh, tea farmers in China from very small family farms. Um, it's designed to give uh, tea lovers in the West access to those really complex teas and we've been running it for I think two years? Two years? Three years? Previously uh, the website was made in Wix. I decided to develop that um, due to some technical limitations that I will get into. As most of our customers come to us from Instagram, I really needed to make sure that uh, the website was a mobile first experience and and so going in I had a few objectives in mind. The first of course was that it had to have a very easy to use and navigate interface even on mobile. It had to be blazing fast so that you could use the website even on mobile networks and even on 3G. The checkout process also had to be really simple and I wanted to eliminate as much form filling as possible. And finally, uh, one of the th things we had struggled with with our Wix site was the fact that um, the main determinant of shipping costs for us is not weight, it's size. And uh, Wix wasn't very good at accommodating that. So uh, there were quite a few orders where the shipping costs were calculated incorrectly and uh, we made losses on those orders. So that was obviously a very big um, objective. I'll leave performance till last because I think that was probably the biggest improvement on the previous website. So all the main elements of the e-commerce store were made from scratch. So we didn't use, or I didn't use an API um, such as Molten because I really wanted it to be as simple as possible. I wanted to weed out any unnecessary features. Uh, I also most importantly wanted to learn. And the last factor was that I wanted to be able to scale the business without having to worry about additional costs. Uh, and additional charges. This is the first version of the website since migrating to Wix, so uh, it does have a few features which are missing, but I'm hoping to integrate them at a later date. But we'll start with the design. So the design is intentionally simple. So over the past few years, we've collected uh, analytics data, and I've used that analytics data as well as feedback from customers to iterate over several design versions. Each time I would look at the data and I would see if uh, the user's attention was where I wanted it to be, if they moved through the website in uh, the way that I uh, intended, intended them to, and whether they were getting distracted by things such as images, colors, features, um, that kind of thing. I use colour sparingly in this because I think it helps to uh, draw attention to things such as images and the things that um, I want the user to focus on. I also found that uh, forcing the user to make a decision uh, quickly on the home page really increased engagement and it allowed those who'd come to our website with a purpose to find what they were looking for quickly. So the next thing that I changed was the hamburger menu. Now, I haven't actually received any feedback um, with regards to the hamburger menu, uh, but personally, I really dislike hamburger menus. I find them annoying to use, um, and it kind of, it, for me, it makes it difficult to navigate the website. So I really wanted to create a more native experience, so I 
uh, placed a navigation bar at the bottom of the page. Now uh, this is uh, the first time I've done it so uh, I will keep an eye on the Google Analytics data to see how people are moving through the website, uh, if people are dropping off uh, when they reach the website and I will kind of iterate from there. So uh, obviously the most important page uh, on the website is the shop page. So the shop page is equally simple and uh, it has a very simple filter menu which is generated dynamically from the products stored in the database. Um, this works really well for my purpose because um, there are only a few types of teas so uh, you won't have too many of those categories. Uh, however, if you did have uh, an e-commerce store that had lots and lots of categories, that would not uh, work so well. Each card uh, is also uh, very simple and it aims to draw attention to two main things and that's the photo, um, well three main things, the photo, the price and the stock status, so whether the product is in stock or out of stock. The product page displays all the other variations of the images, so you can look through them. It also has a accordion menu which displays all of the information about the tea. Uh, you're able to select variations uh, of the product and add them to cart. Mm, this is sent to the basket uh, drawer on the right, which you can open. And in there you can see all of the different uh, products you have. And from there you can manage your cart, so you can remove items. You can uh, initiate checkout by simply choosing the country or the shipping destination and pressing checkout. The subtotal and postage and packaging are also displayed and uh, calculated within the basket drawer. Next I want to have a look at the checkout process. So checking out uh, on a mobile phone is a pain in my experience uh, because you know you don't want to be filling out loads of forms and you want it to be as simple as possible. So from uh, looking at the data that we've collected over the past uh, two years I was actually really surprised to find out that uh, over 95% of our customers use PayPal to check out. Um, they didn't use card, they opted for PayPal and this was actually really useful because it meant that uh, we could offer PayPal as the sole provider because they do also offer card checkout. This allows us to initiate checkout straight from the basket drawer uh, simply by choosing your destination country but without having to fill out any forms or without having to fill out your billing information, delivery information. Um, and contact details. This significantly reduces the complexity of the checkout process uh, which I think works really well for a mobile first website. So this information gets uh, sent to our server and verified on our server so it verifies shipping costs, it verifies product costs and it then forwards you to PayPal. I think this is also a good time to talk about shipping costs because so one of the main things that we struggled with with Wix is that our products um, take up different amounts of space but they often weigh the same because we're selling tea. So um, really the main determinant of shipping costs are uh, the destination country and the amount of space the parcel takes up. Uh, and we weren't really able to achieve this in Wix, so we were able to achieve something similar by using proxy weights uh, for things such as a big tin, you know, saying that the big tin weighed one kilo and a small sample packet weighed um, like 100 grams. Uh, but it wasn't very accurate and there were a few orders where we made losses uh, because of the unexpected shipping costs. And so one of my main goals going in was to um, create an accurate shipping calculator. And I've done this on the Node.js backend. So the products get sent to the backend, they're then run through the, uh, the program and uh, the relevant shipping cost is selected based on uh, the products that you've selected. So um, finally we've got performance. So. I think this was the biggest improvement. So our previous site, which was a Wix site, had a uh, performance rating, a Google speed test rating, I should say, of, uh, I think it was, let me just check, 
of 15 out of 100 on mobile and 38 out of 100 on desktop. And um, my goal was to get above that to, or for 95 on desktop and 90 on mobile. And I, we actually met those targets with a solid 100 on desktop and a 93 when even using a 3G network, so not a 4G network. Um, the site was created using React.js and Node.js. Um, Node is kind of notorious for its performance and scalability uh, because it um, it can handle a lot of requests in one go. So there are a few things that I focused on to make my store as fast as possible. The first was to uh, reduce the number of requests that I made to external APIs um, and also to the back end, which um, was possible with React because React is a single page uh, application and it's able to store state uh, within the application, which means that um, I can make the calls all in one go, for example, when the user initiates the checkout. Speaking of APIs, there was one particular API which helped a lot with performance, and that was something called Cloudinary. So Cloudinary helps to compress photos, and it does this from a single image, and you can then manipulate the image from the uh, code itself to make it, to optimize it on different mediums such as mobile or desktop and also uh, different compression rates and sizes. This was a big factor in improving performance on our website. Uh, finally, I think is something that I was most happy with uh, was during deployment to Heroku, uh, I chose to pre-render all of our pages using a uh, dependency called React uh, Snapshot and it pre-renders all of the pages into static HTML and it significantly increases loading times. And this was really useful because I had built my app in Create React App uh, and it stopped me from having to migrate to something like Next.js uh, towards the end of my project. Uh, so that was, uh, that saved a lot of time. It's actually also very useful uh, and improves SEO, especially when integrated with something called a React Helmet, which allows you to add custom metadata and titles to each of your web pages, which is a big improvement for static, uh, sorry, single page applications. So that's pretty much my application. Um, so I really appreciate some feedback. Um, I completely forgot to say that uh, the site is also tested using Jest, but uh, just an enzyme, but for a full list of the dependencies that I used, please head over to my GitHub, um, have a look at the source code. I really appreciate some feedback, um, particularly on the code itself. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, and I can't wait to hear what you think. Thanks. Bye.